This episode of Basics with Babish is brought to you by Bright Cellars, a monthly wine club that matches you with fine wine you'll love and delivers it right to your door. Bright Cellars is offering you 50% off your first six bottle box, so follow the link in the video description to take the taste palette quiz and get started. More on that later. For now, we're making latkes. Let's get down to basics. So as you folks might have guessed, latkes begin and end with potatoes. I have here before me a smattering of Idaho-grown russet-style potatoes, the ideal tuber for this particular application. We're going to start by peeling our potatoes. I'm using four large russets and then grating them on the large holes of a box grater along with a small onion. Grating the onion along with the potatoes gets it all nice and mixed in right off the bat. Throughout this process, you're going to notice that your potatoes are starting to discolor, turning a reddish muddy brown. This is a perfectly normal and natural process called oxidation, and it will not affect the flavor of your final product. Next up, the most important step in latke making, the wringing. That is dumping our grated potatoes out into a clean kitchen towel, twisting the towel into a tight bindle, and wringing all this excess water out of the potatoes. This is going to take a bit of elbow grease, but in the end you should be able to wring about a half a cup of water out of four large russet potatoes. You'll notice that the potatoes are now browning more slowly. That's because we've just removed a large amount of their starch. These guys are now ready to become latkes. I'm just going to give them a taste to make sure that they are still raw potatoes. I'm just kidding. Don't do this. Raw potatoes are bad for you? Question mark. Another thing to don't do is don't throw away all this potato water. Let it sit in a bowl for about five minutes, at which point all the starch from the potatoes will settle in the bottom of the bowl. And according to Cooks Illustrated, this stuff, when added to the eggs that we're going to add to the latkes, will both help bind the latkes together and make them extra crispy. So we're going to mix all that reserved starch with our eggs. I'm going to start with three eggs. We want just enough to bind our grated potatoes together. So in a extra large bowl, we're going to combine our potatoes with our egg and starch slurry mixture, along with about a cup of panko breadcrumbs to make these guys extra crispy. Then we're going to mix these guys together by hand. Again, we want just enough egg in there so the potatoes hold their shape when pressed together. Three eggs turned out to be not quite enough in my situation, so I'm going to add another one. And with that, we have created the basis for the ultimate potato latkes. Now comes the matter of forming them into potato patties. For extra crispy edges, I like to ball up the potatoes into a ball, and then go ahead and smoosh them down. This causes the sides of the patty to kind of explode out, giving our latka plenty of craggles and cracks, which will translate directly into more crispness when fried. Speaking of which, it's time to fry. Into a 12-inch skillet goes about a half inch of vegetable oil that we're going to heat to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. In go the latkas, which we're going to fry on each side for about four to five minutes, or until deeply golden brown and crisp. It's during this time that we're going to daydream about what we're going to top these bad boys with. Are you going to be super basic about it and use applesauce and sour cream? Are you going to go completely off the reservation and make latke poutine? Whatever you do, you are going to drain these guys on a wire rack and salt them immediately after they come out of the oil. Once everybody's all fried up, we can commence to topping. First up, tail as old as time, some smoked salmon and cream cheese. Perhaps a, a sprig of dill if you're feeling extra fresh. Next up, let's go mega meaty with some pastrami, whole grain mustard, and a cornichon pickle. Next up, one of my personal favorites, a dollop of cream cheese and some spicy red pepper jelly. Last up, how about some grass-fed yogurt, pomegranate seeds, a slice or two of fresh habanero for the bold, and a drizzle of clover honey. And there you have it, folks, the world's crispiest, fluffiest latkes topped with the world's most flavorful toppings. Whether you're celebrating a holiday or just celebrating lunchtime, these are some beautiful blank canvases upon which to make your masterpiece. And if you ask me, most of these would pair nicely with a rich, buttery white wine, but where to find a rich, buttery white wine? Oh yeah, how about today's sponsor, Bright Cellars? I might know a thing or two about food, but I certainly don't fancy myself a sommelier, which is why I've thoroughly enjoyed using Bright Cellars, a service that selects wine just for me from all around the world and delivers it right to my door. The service is only for adults 21 and older. All it takes is a quick seven-question non-wine snobby survey to gather your taste preferences and deliver wines you're guaranteed to enjoy. The folks at Bright Cellars take pride in educating their club members so each 
box comes with a wine education card for each bottle that outlines tasting notes, suggested pairings, ideal serving temperature, and origin. Instead of just talking about it, let's see what came in this month's box. My pick of the bunch was the Batik Chardonnay, a full-bodied fruit-forward Chardonnay that I think would pair really nicely with today's smoked salmon latkes. Bright Sellers is offering you 50% off your first six-bottle box, so be sure to follow the link in the description below to take the taste palette quiz and get started. Thank you.